Greetings from D-Lab Electronics. On the bench today, I have a K model 754 guitar amp. This amp was built back in the day when you could get away without using a power transformer or a fuse. So these are referred to as Widowmakers. The amp was sent to D-Lab to be converted to a six volt system with a power transformer to make it safe. Let's take a look at the model 754K. Very simple lineup. We have our volume, tone, and tremolo. The cabinet's in pretty good shape. Let's take a look around the back. Here's the back of the amp. Speaker wiring is disconnected. Look down on the bottom. You can see the schematic. Tube lineup is a 50C5, 35W4, and a 12AV6. Get a photograph of that. I'm going to start my work. And here's the chassis. All the tubes are removed. I have those. And then you got the old crusty filter cap. Not much else going on. Let's get that chassis out and take a look at it. I pull it off the baffle board. The chassis is attached to that. You can look in there and see that vintage circus board. There is a little output transformer. Of course, the main filter cap. Original speaker. And now we can get a pretty good view of that schematic. So I'm going to be taking this in steps. I have a little process laid out. I'll let you know about that after I get this back panel off of the chassis and take a look at that circuit board. Okay, first step, we got to verify that this amplifier works at all. So I've installed the tubes. I have the 35W4, 50C5, 12AV6. I'm going to bring it up on a Variac. This Variac has an isolation transformer in it. Just want to see if there's any signs of life before I proceed. And there is about 80 volts supplied. That should be good enough. Here she comes. Obviously that filter cap is bad, as I would expect. But now I know it's safe to continue with the modification. Well, here's a game plan for converting the K to six volt tubes and a power transformer. So the 35W4 is gonna be changed with a 6X4. The 50C5 will become a 6AQ5 and the 12AV6 will simply be changed with a 6AV6. So I've got 10 steps. The first is a test of the amp and inspect the circuit board. We've already done that. Next, I'm going to change the filter cap and increase the voltage rating. I'm going to change the filament circuit from a series to parallel circuit using all pins 3 and 4 on each of the tubes. We'll change the 50C5 to 6AQ5, 35W4 to 6X4, and of course the 12AV6 simply needs to be swapped to a 6AV6. I'm going to install a Stancor PS8416 power transformer. I happen to have one of those old stock in the box. And then we're going to inspect the board to see if any other component replacement is necessary. We'll retest and change the bias resistor for the 6AQ5 as needed. Then I'll be installing a grounded power cord and of course a fuse. So next step, let's get this filter cap off the board, get some fresh caps and make sure the hum goes away. Well, there's our new filter caps strapped underneath the board. We've got the amp powered up on my Variac. Just want to make sure it plays. It does. Let's check the tremolo. All right, that's good news. Next, we're gonna start converting it over to the six volt tubes. We're gonna start with the filament rewiring. So currently, you see V1, 2, and 3 are all wired in series. We're gonna be wiring those in parallel, and all of them use pins three and four. There's a 150 ohm five watt resistor that goes to one side of the line. That's coming out. And then while we're at it, we're gonna be removing this 22 ohm resistor 
for prep of changing the 35W4 over to a 6X4. So one thing I missed, this is pins one, and then two and three were joined on the 12AV6. Those traces need to be cut. So I had to actually pop the socket off the board. It's kind of neat, this is the tube version of surface mount components. So I've got to cut that trace so I can isolate the filaments. So I just took my Dremel tool, cut that trace, and I can put the socket back on and get this wiring done. Filament wiring is complete. I had to cut this trace that went to a 100K resistor because it was relying on pins 3 and 4 for ground. So I had to make a little jumper to ground. Then we have a little twisted pair that leaves the 6AV6 over to the 6AQ5. One of the traces was still usable going to the rectifier tube. I've got them powered up right now. And they are glowing. So 6 volt filament wiring is complete. Next step I need to change the connection pin out where the 50C5 was. The 6AQ5 has different pins for the grid, cathode, and plate. So I'm going to have to cut traces and install jumpers for the 6AQ5. I have made up a nice little chart showing you guys the crossover between those two tubes. I'll post that in the video. Here's the 6AQ5, jumper is complete, pin 5 is now plate, so I cut 7 and ran a jumper. And then the cathode and grids are swapped, so you cut both those traces and crisscross those. And that is all you need to do jumper wise on the board. In its original configuration, one side of the line went to this floating ground on the board we're obviously not going to do that anymore because we're going to have a standard high voltage supply. So center tap's going to go here and the two plate leads will go to the new 6X4 tube. Next, I'm going to go ahead and temporarily connect the power transformer to the board and we're going to give this thing a trial run. I had this new old stock Stancor PS8416 transformer. It's perfect for this little application. Okay, here's the amp running. We've got the stand core transformer hooked up, monitoring the bias on the output tube. So the current bias resistor is 150 ohms and 4 volts across it. It's about 26 milliamps through that tube, so I'm going to change that to something around 2 to 250. Okay, I put in a new bias resistor. I also spotted this crusty 10 microfarad cap, changed that out too. So currently we're pulling about 21 milliamps. And my high voltage, about 130 or so. It's looking good. Time to do the final installation of the transformer, get this thing back together. All right, the project is pretty much complete. I just have to get it back in the cabinet. One thing I wanted to point out, on the 6x4 rectifier, pin 1 is one of the plates, and that pin was just kind of hanging there, not soldered, so I was concerned that it would be brittle. So I swung a jumper over here to an unused pad, cut the trace, and used that to land the wires on. Also, don't forget, since the 6 volt winding does not have a center tap, you need to add the 200 ohm resistors to balance the filament circuit. I've got the K reassembled. So we have our new tube lineup, 6AV6 tremolo, 6AQ5 output, and the 6X4 rectifier. Here's that Stancor PS8416 transformer mounted up. The wiring goes in where the old filter cap was. I added a jack for the speakers so you could unplug the internal and pop an external on here if you want came together really well. Another limitation of this K amplifier design. When I initially got it, I saw the 12 AV6 in this position. I assumed that that was the preamp, but it wasn't. That is the tremolo oscillator. The preamp section of this amp is actually a transistor. So it does not really provide enough gain to drive the output tube into any kind of overdrive. She stays clean all the way up. So a nice improvement would be 
to add a pre-amplifier tube. There is enough room to add it to the chassis, and if you're careful, you could modify that circuit board. But that would have to be a future project. So as promised, I'm going to cut to the tech notes and the schematic changes for the K754 conversion to 6-volt tubes. Now you may say, hey, you could have simply installed an isolation transformer. If you take a look at the schematic, you'll see that the AC line is actually connected to the common of the circuit. Meaning, even if you use an isolation transformer, you would still have 120 volt AC present on that chassis. So that is why I elected to use a standard plate filament type transformer. The little Stancor 8416 is perfect for this application. It's good for 25 milliamps of plate current, so the 6AQ5 has all the current that it needs. And now, the other big bonus to this new design, if you said, I want more power out of this amplifier, you could change that plate transformer to, say, a Hammond 269EX, which would give you 380 volt center tap rather than the 250 volt center tap. This transformer that I'm currently using matches up with the power supply that they used for the 50C5 output tube. Sky's the limit now, guys. This amp could be modified and give you as much power as a champ if you wanted to. All right, here's the K playing. I'm using a looper. Working pretty good. Now, if you're interested in doing this modification, I do have the documentation available. Just drop me a line or check me out on dlabelectronics.com. See it.